how do you actually go from struggling in high school to going to community college to becoming a rocket scientist at NASA? That seems like that's a, a track that somebody that is a genius early on in school that has straight A's that is advanced algebra. And what exactly is a rocket scientist anyway? I think that what happens in life is that when you're growing up, you listen to what people around you say and you think they know, but oftentimes they're just guessing. They don't really know. And so at that point in time in my life, I wasn't focused on the books because there was a lot of other stuff going on at home. They were lucky if they saw me. And I was happy to occasionally be there, but I was focused on just making it through the day, not so much making the grades. And so what happened was, I leave this high school environment after you know talking to guidance counselors and things, and so the famous kind of story here is that my high school guidance counselor suggested that I should be a cosmetologist. And that was like the first time that I actually felt mad. And there's really nothing against it. It was that that was all that she thought I was capable of being. And I started asking myself, why do I think the way that I do about what's possible for me? Like who really tested whether or not what people are telling me is true or not? So I end up in community college, not doing well the first semester. And I have this moment where it's like- What was your GPA in high school? 2.313. So that's like a C average, right? Because mm. 2.0 is a C average. 3.0 is a B average, right? 4.0 is an A average. So you would like a C, you're a C student. Like a C student. C student. Yeah, yeah. Like Shout a, out to the C students. Yeah, C's get student. degrees. I, I, Listen, I the C students are running the companies the A C's, students are working that's a for. Fact. C students run the world. C students are running this company right now. <laughs> <laughs> <But> look, <laughs> I, I have this paper at my house to this day as motivation. Literally, like I look at it I want to make it into Kleenex tissue so people can boo-hoo into it when they visit me. Because it really shows, like, it's not where you start, it's how you finish. And I still to this day don't know why we need to measure it to 313, but they did that. So 2.3 would have been fine. So 2.3 GPA in high school, you go to community college, and you just, all right, so what, what happens at community college? Do I, like, bomb the first semester. I think I'm going to be a business student, study economics. Econ had math in it. I didn't know how to study, didn't have any self-confidence. I find myself in my room, it's like dark, it's dramatic, it's everything. It's like, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. And I have this thought, well, why do you think that you're not capable of anything great? Like, why do you get up every day and look at yourself and feel bad? Like, why do you allow that? And so I thought that I was gonna just do something crazy, like take out a piece of paper and make a dream list and escape to this fantasy land but then I realized, like, in the immortal words of Tupac, the dreams are real. Rest in peace, Tupac. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. That's so a fact. this list, which I, you know, to this day I remember it was very short, very simple. I want to look at myself and feel good, right? I want to say my name and feel respected. I want to go to college. And if I go to college, I want to study something that is outrageous that's impressive that every single time I introduce myself I'm going to feel proud to say and I kind of put in rocket science because that's the thing right like that's like the unachievable dream <laughs> and so it was sort of I like was this like, hidden you could have prayer a few other things but <laughs> But it was like this hidden yeah. prayer of like, well, look, if I put this in there, then like I will truly know that God is real. I will be good for the rest of my life. But that that was the list. So okay, so you have this awakening after the first semester in, jun in junior college that mm -hmm. you want to be a rocket scientist. Yeah. So then you start doing better in school. I'm assuming. Let's tell yeah. like what's what's because so, I don't even feel like that. It almost seems like I want to do better, but sometimes I just may not have the capability. Had you always had the capability to be a great student, especially mm -hmm. in mathematics, or was that something that you found after this moment, this epiphany in a sense? So I think what I found was the courage to try. Because when I started telling people about my dream, they're all like, oh no, you're crazy, that's never gonna happen, da 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 da. Like nobody was a fan. They literally thought that I had lost it. Mm -hmm. And so that actually allowed me the safe space to just focus in on myself, and what I wanted to do was like a blessing in disguise. I just kind of got to go in stealth mode. And it wasn't an overnight success. It was as though I was consistently accomplishing small things that turned into bigger things. 
So while I transitioned out of community college to Michigan Aerospace, I think I failed every single class that first semester of Michigan Aero. But that's okay, I took the beating and was like, well, if I made it this far, I can continue to make it. And so I realized that there was no such thing really as failure, it was just more learning, right? Some of those lessons are gonna hurt more than others, but if you can be informed by them, mm -hmm then you can succeed. So like the second time, maybe I take that class and get a B. And that's what I committed to. I just committed to the process and to the long game. And over that, I got better and better until I got to the point where I was like, there isn't anything that I can't do that I can't come back from. I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to have no hope. So what, what is it if I see a grade and perceive failure? No, take it again, do it again. Mm -hmm. So you go from community college to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm -hmm. What did you study at Michigan? Uh, aerospace engineering and space systems engineering. From from a financial standpoint, is that in, in, in your mind, right? Because you're thinking community college is going to cost me one thing. I'm going to the University of Michigan. This is this is going to be an expensive process. I have to make it, right? Like failing classes is one thing in high school because it's like, yeah, you can do a summer school and do it. You fail in college – there's a price associated with that and redoing it, there's a price associated with that. So how much did the financial impact of what you, the decisions you were making have on you? That's such a good question. You know, that first semester when I failed all those courses at Michigan, cause that was real money, right? I was living <laughs> off of like $300 a month and some of those classes, $600 a credit hour. I literally took out a life insurance policy on myself so that if I died during college, my parents wouldn't have to pay that money back. Because I didn't, I mean, I didn't come from people who could pay for college. Mm -hmm. And so here I am, I got in, I'm terrified, I'm failing classes, and all I can think about is how I don't want to stick somebody else with that debt. It's a real thought. <laughs> it's a real thought. So uh, is that furthermore encouragement to say, I have to do this? Yeah. This is my path now. I've decided to go in. I have to make it. So when you when you fail, are you? You're allowed to take because sometimes you start failing courses and you know they call you into administration like, hey, this I definitely may got those calls. this may not be for you. We may have to let you go from the school. Yeah, I mean, I definitely um, <clears throat> had a few of those meetings, <laughs> but I just I yeah. refused to commit to the idea that I couldn't do it. I was just like, no, right? Like, look, if I can go from being in high school and not doing so well to being in community college to being at this point, damn it, I'm gonna make it out. And between taking more classes than I probably should have, so I could have gotten out sooner, which didn't necessarily help the stress. I think I lived on Red Bull and burritos mm. for at least a year. Everything that I encountered just made me feel like when I leave this place, I want to rewrite the script on how people do this. Because you can and you will. So by the time you graduated from Michigan, what was your GPA? Oh, I nearly four pointed my master's. Huh? Four, and so all right. So you, you get it together, you graduate from, from college, right? Mm -hmm. Then you go to you have a master's program that you go yeah. to. Where is that at? Also at Michigan. So you so stay in Michigan for your master's program. Yeah, what's, so the, what's the master's in? So my master's is in space systems engineering with a focus on nanosatellites, like satellites the size of a shoebox. So by that time, you, you're fully entrenched into the academic world and you, you're, you're doing good. Yes, but the cool part about this part was I transitioned from a program that was mostly theoretical to a program that was practical. Like we were doing real things. We were building with our hands. And that type of learning I got. I'm not necessarily like a design an airplane on the back of a napkin person, but if you give me something and you tell me to make something, then I can do it. And that's when I really learned about the power of like learning styles. And like if you don't learn something the first time, it's not because you can't learn it. It's that you may not have found the person that can teach it to you in the way that you learn. Yeah, for sure. And that's the problem with American school, and they only teach in one way. Exactly. 